This is my ever-growing collection of the Radio Shack TRS-80 computer line of products. And I'm particularly nostalgic about the Model 1s because our first computer that we purchased in 1980 was a Model 1 Level 1 with a massive 4K of memory. Now we quickly outgrew the Level 1 with 4K, but we ended up skipping ahead to the Model 3 that was available by that time that had the integrated disk drives and more memory. So I never got the chance to try the Model 1s with the Level 2 and increased memory, or this box over here, which is the TRS-80 expansion interface. And this unit allowed for the RAM expansion beyond 16K, as well as adding a line printer interface, a floppy disk controller, and an expansion card edge for boards like an RS-232 interface. So I thought I would try a different video format here, just like a one day kind of in and out. Uh, let's pull apart the expansion interface and see if we can find anything obvious and get it at least working somewhat with the Model 1. I'll start by removing this panel that covers the two internal power supplies. Now it's important to note that they use different screw lengths for these different holes, so make sure you keep track of all of the screws and where they go. So even though this is the first time I'm opening up an expansion interface, I can tell that this cable just doesn't belong here and it probably should be tucked up here in the upper right. And this wire leading to this pin leads me to believe that there's some form of modification that's been done to this unit. But before we go any further, let's first get these power supplies out of the way. And then finally, just removing these last three Phillips screws that are holding the board to the case. There are some definite modifications that have been made to this board, including these two lines that aren't connected to anything. And it appears to me like there was a modification that was started on this board that was just never finished. And thanks to the TRS80.com website, I was able to find this bulletin that explains exactly what this modification was supposed to be. And in this case, it was to support the installation of a buffered cable, which was to correct system noise issues that was causing random reboots between the TRS-80s and the expansion interfaces. And thankfully, this technical bulletin contains all of the details that tells me exactly what remains to be connected on this expansion interface. Now these mods look a little sketchy by today's standards. But this was the way they rolled in the 70s, so I'm going to go with it and let's power it up and see what happens. So upon the first power up there was no smoke, and a quick check at both voltage regulators concludes that we're seeing the voltages we should be seeing. And while I'm in the mood for cleaning, I'll give the buffered cable and the power supplies a good wipe down. And finally it's time to test the two power supplies that came with the expansion interface. And while the first power supply is in pretty good shape and giving us the right voltages, the second one is a little worse for wear. Now there's no exposed metal that I can see on this power supply, so I'm going to just test it even though I have no intention of actually using this with a machine until this cable gets fixed. And now that the expansion interface is back together, all we have to do is hook everything up, power on the expansion interface first, and because we don't have disk drives, we hold the brake key and then power on the Model 1. And yes, this is a really good sign. 
And now for the moment of truth, we should see the 32K coming up. And this is awesome. So it's been about two hours and I've just left the machine running. It's letting off what I would consider normal heat, uh, not enough to roast any marshmallows on. So that's a really good sign. And I would say that the rewiring or fixing the wiring of the expansion interface uh, definitely was a success. And the only next steps for it are to take care of this keyboard bounce issue that I'm experiencing. And I think this is pretty common, especially with the pre-Alps keyboards on the TRS 80s. But thankfully there's a ROM upgrade that Radio Shack made. And I think it was ROM version 1.3 where they included some code to actually debounce the keyboards through software. So I'm going to implement that as well as fix the number nine key, which has suddenly decided to stop working altogether. So hopefully that's just some sort of uh, solder joint that I need to fix on the keyboard. So I thought a great next steps would be to actually load a program, but the cassette cable that came with the machine actually has a broken connection somewhere between the data line uh, input from the cassette player and the DIN connector. So that's not going to work out for us, but that's okay because now that we have the expansion interface working, we can actually hook up a disk drive to this machine. And I don't have a working disk drive unit, but I'm thinking of using the GoTech device. And these are very popular. I know that they've been used on the TRS-80 lines from the color computers right through all the models. So I know that it's something that is possible. I'll just have to track down the next steps. So I'm gonna put a pin in it, as they say. And I wanna take this opportunity again to thank you so much for watching and following along with these TRS-80 videos. There'll be more to come. Uh, please leave a comment uh, whether or not you're a TRS-80 aficionado. I would love to hear from you and love to hear from anyone who's done anything like this on these machines. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.